Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Guess what? We've got another tent. So full disclosure guys, I actually approached North Tent and asked them if I could get one of these to test because I really like the look of it. And amazingly they came back and said, you know what, we'll send you one free of charge. So there you go. Thank you very much North Tent from Norway to Scotland in 24 hours, which is pretty impressive. Nice little colour brochure with it, or instruction. Separate pull bag. Seems quite short, there's immediate impression which is quite good. I quite like the fact it's not too long a pull section. Full glossy colour instructions, as you can probably see there. Uh, you wouldn't want to take it with you in the tent, but uh, I'll read that once, have a good look over it, and then we'll get the thing pitched. Poles are 300 grams, and the tent with pegs itself is, appears to be about 1.8. So in the stuff sack, I've just found there's a little pocket which Velcro's off in the lid. And there's a bunch of patches, a pole repair sleeve, and some sill net and an applicator as well. And the tent itself is secured with a plastic buckle and strap, which I don't know if we actually need. I would probably dump that. Seems like unnecessary weight. There you go. I don't know if you can see that there. Nice uh, quality though. Ah. So there's pegs and poles in here as well. So on that basis, I'm assuming that this one is probably the crossing pole for winter use. So that's an extra but separate 300 grams. And then if we put the main tent, poles, pegs, and everything on there, and it's coming in about 1.6. So the pegs themselves sound like they're quite heavy. Let's get a look at them. So the pegs are logoed Y section, um, about, I don't know what that will be, six inches long, logoed up with their name on it as well. Quite nice actually, kind of matte anodized finish on them. And they have the little cord pullers, just a lot easier to get out with gloved hands or cold hands. So there's no less than 14 pegs in there, so pretty extensive. And then this is the main tent pole, which looks to be, I don't think it's DAC, I think it's just an unbranded. Uh, 7000 series aluminium. I'm not actually quite sure about the diameter on it. I'll put that on the uh, screen if I can find out for you. And then separate from the tent pole, you've also got a logoed up, or sorry, a stuff sack that tells you quite clearly that this must be the crossing pole for the four season use. Nice attention to detail on the crossing pole and that they also give you a separate pole repair sleeve. I guess you wouldn't have to carry that. I'd probably just take one. So at the ends of the tent, you've got in the similar design to an Enan, a couple of wee vertical foot and head poles, which are captive, I can see already built in. So no need to put those in or assemble them when you come to the actual pitch. Certainly some nice fabrics involved in it. I don't know if you can see that there, but the pole is captive at this end, so there's no need to insert an eyelet. It fits into a kind of rubberized sleeve, as is typical of a kind of Nordic style tent. I'll loosen this off a wee bit. There we go. It has a plastic foot part where the pole goes into. And then I believe you just tension this strap up, but it says don't over tighten it initially. So we'll pull it to about there and then we'll just pop it up loosely. Right, so that's the basics up. Unfortunately, I'll put the door on this side. I didn't really want it on because it's easier to film from the other. But anyway, I'm not going to take it back down. We'll just go with this. Um, yeah, so basically the triangle ends are very like the Hilleberg Enan. So there's a center pole in the middle. There's a vent system and then just two end pegs. And then you tension it out and get the angle on it by using this guy line system here. I presume this little metal tag here will be for the four season crossing pole and that's where it'll end. We'll test that in a minute. And then I think it attaches around these Velcro tabs here. And then up through 
and attached to these and then through the top here but uh, yeah so far so good there's just a very thin kind of wire here to um, shape the hood the vent hood oh, I'll just straighten that up with two hands in a second to show you more as you can see it's slightly bent out of shape um, but that's okay just a kind of brass wire system you can see all the X-Pack reinforcement at the various guy points, which is quite encouraging. It does look well made, I have to say. And if you look at that, it seems to use that kind of rubberized fabric you see on Hilleberg on the zip, the door flaps. This is quite good. The guy lines have got retainer clips, so just a wee press and pull. And then you can take the guy line out of there and unravel it and then just Park it back in there when you're finished taking the tent down. Notice the X-Pack reinforced webbing here and on here where it attaches to the fly sheet. All looks um, really nicely made. So, so far really pretty simple to put up. Uh, inner was already attached which I didn't think it would be. So you've also got additional points halfway along the fly sheet here. So I'll just pop them in as well. Just make it extra secure. One in here as well, two on the other side, this is the door side and I think, I believe you can tie the door back along here and then tie it to there and then it will still be pegged to there which leaves you kind of access, keeps most of the weather out. But the great thing about this one is there's actually two zips so depending on which way the wind is coming or the weather you can open either that door or that door and still stay undercover. There's a buckle there to stop zip creep take the strain off the, the fly sheet so the door zips right back round to the bottom of the brass wire giving you a bit more room and I've just realised what the two pegs are that were missing it's for the, the main hoop, missed them completely so there you go quite like the way the door actually hangs rather than falls in the dirt a wee bit like the Fjallraven Abisko light one there we go. Right, I'm going to fix these inners because it's it's not quite right at the foot and the head end at the moment. I've tightened up the straps, that seems to have made the inner a lot tauter. And uh, I'll get back inside again, have a look. Yeah, that's much better. Looks far tidier inside now. Way better. So internally, pocket-wise, we've got one here. We've got another one to this side on the door. We've got the vents at the back. At either end. And then behind me here we've got two pockets for more kit here. We have a hanging loop in the middle. And I'll just check to see if there's tabs to attach a hanging line. There doesn't appear to be actually. It'd be quite nice if they just added a couple of wee nylon loops along the main ridge. If you notice the zip pullers all have the little attachments on them with glow in the dark. Glove friendly, finger friendly and they're quiet so no metal tinkling during the night at the end vents you can pull the zips down and then just leave the mesh up for some internal uh, ventilation and then on the outside you've got a solid panel which toggles it connects to two rings at the bottom left and right and that will keep any really wild weather out but most of the time a bit like the Hilleberg Enan there's a pocket on this solid panel rolls up and tucks away in there which I've now done on this side and then you can just close this back up. Sorry for banging the camera about there. And you've also got the ability to toggle this down for ventilation or seal it up completely. So I was a wee bit concerned it might feel a bit claustrophobic inside, but actually the inner is so low, I've got another two feet beyond my toes there until it narrows down, which means that at the foot, and certainly for me at the head end, I have a vast amount of space above my head. I don't know if you can see this properly, I'm stretched flat out and I've got another foot beyond my hand. So for tall users, in terms of in the lying down anyway, it's got tons of length. So yeah, you've got 95 centimetres head height on the inner. I'm not in a mat at the moment, it's just fine for me, I'm not quite touching. If you were a tall user, you would probably want to unclip this and then tuck that behind your head. And then that would just give you much more room for cooking and generally just... <coughs> getting on with your housekeeping tasks completely solid so you can make it one very warm tent in the winter 
And then for more ventilation, just undo the inner zip, pull that around, and you've got a complete mesh door as well with corresponding tyres for the inside. Right, so, and to be honest, it's about 9, 10 degrees outside at the moment and it's absolutely roasting in here. <laughs> it's going to be a warm tent, that's for sure. But I do like the fact you've got so many ventilation options in it. I have to say I love this mesh. It's uh, I had this in my zero gram tent. It's kind of more dense than your average midgy no seam mesh. So it's much more windproof. And I think it's actually the same stuff that's used in the Hillebergenan. And they don't have a solid door at all. But that's not an issue because this is pretty much draft proof. And yet very breathable and lets through a lot of light. It's the same stuff that's used in the Invents. And again, the Invents in the Enan as well. So much better than your average midi mesh and it's much more robust and less likely to lose its weave and create gaps. And as you can see, you can vent above here. So these are pretty generous as well, but still stay under cover. Uh, the actual vestibule area is massive. So there is tons of room to tuck away gear, rucksacks to one side, plenty of room for cooking and organizing food. And again, plenty of room to store up the back there. Again, it's partly I think to do with the, the sheer length of it. It does feel very, very long. And I've clipped the zip uh, buckle at the bottom there just to stop strain on it because actually when the pole, I think I've over tightened it slightly, it was actually pretty damn tight at the bottom. Right, let's get outside. We'll pop on the four season pole and see what that looks like, just to give you an idea as well. And this is it with both doors half open. So you can create this kind of large awning space just to cook away, let condensation out if the weather's not too bad. You're still in the dry, but you have tons of room and lots of uh, lots of view if you've got a nice a nice spot to camp. Goes through the Velcro at either end, attaches over these loops here, as you can see, and securely into the other side. So I think most of the time you're not going to need that pole. You're not going to need the extra three hundred grams. It looks perfectly fine without it. One thing about these crossing pole straps is they don't actually detach completely. So it looks to me like you basically have this attached to the tent all the time, which I think may become a wee bit of a flappy nightmare sound-wise. I may be wrong, but we'll wait to see what happens. So with a Thermarest Neo Air inside, just kind of roughly centred, there's two feet beyond there. I know it doesn't show it particularly, but it, there is. And if I swing you around to the head end, there's at least two feet possibly two and a half feet to the end of the tent again. But the good news about that is it means your head is not sort of covered with material or your feet rubbing against the inner, unless you're exceptionally tall. But it would fit you if you were exceptionally tall. The one exception being the internal headroom at 95 is low profile. All nice strong fabrics. The use of X-Packs and all the reinforced stressed areas. All looks good. The Velcro straps, unlike the ones I used to have on my SCAT 1, much more substantial for holding the crossing pole in place. So all in all, yeah, it looks like a, quite a comfortable and spacious solo tent to be in. Quite long footprint, but then that gives you more head and foot room. So a big uh, thank you to Nortent for sending me this for review. I'm really looking forward to getting out this weekend. Um, generally, yeah, very good. It's quite complex. There's quite a lot going on in it. There's a lot of details in it. Some might say almost slightly over-engineered, it could probably be simplified a wee bit. Um, it all looks great, like nice materials, nice quality generally. And my only concern is that the straps are captive. So if you're not using that crossing pole, are the straps going to batter off the fly sheet in high winds and just annoy you? But that remains to be seen. So thanks for watching, we'll get out now and we'll get to use this. And that will either be a continuation of this video or the next video, which I'll do separately. If you've got any questions, drop me a line below. And thanks again for watching.